Ah, oh, well, here we are again. Good to see you. Great Good to see you. Great to see you. See you as you always. See. Gareth, we're here to celebrate 200 years of rugby and 200 years of Gilbert creating, as it were, the rugby ball. I was amused to discover from you that the very first practice you had before your first international cap, you didn't even have a ball. <laughs> they wouldn't give me a ball. More, more, to, the, more to the point, uh, John, I, I, I was pretty nervous, obviously, at 19 years of age and played my first game with the great uh, David Watkins, who had already played for the British and Irish Lions and, and was already playing about 25, 26 times for Wales. The, the thought of actually playing with him in my first game in Paris, <laughs> where everybody said they won't pick a, a 19 year old to play in Paris. So there was enough on my mind, so to speak, when I had the. Um, uh, I got the courage to ring David uh, during the week and say, Dave, any chance of having a run out with you? I'm pretty conscious that my pass won't be as good as what most people think it ought to be. <laughs> sure, guy, I work in Cardiff. He says, what time can you be in Cardiff? Uh, oh, I said, half five, uh, half five, six o'clock, I can, I, I can be there. Oh, great. He says, I'll meet you at the Arms Park. He said, I will have a little run out. I was late. <laughs> Looked at my watch, oh my word, I hope he's still there. <clears throat> when I got there, I said, sorry, die, I'm late, I said, but uh, traffic was terrible. Oh, don't worry about that, he says. They won't give us a ball anyway to play with. <laughs> I, I, so I knew it was Cardiff's pitch, right? And I knew, you know, Newport weren't exactly enamored by, by Cardiff and all that kind of thing. And he says, well, look, the most important thing is, he says, you want to know where I'm going to be standing. And that's what this is the most important thing. Don't worry about what, what ball, what you're going to throw to me, etc., etc. as long as it gets to me. So the next thing I saw, did, if, if I hadn't witnessed myself, I wouldn't believe it. It pulls off his, his, his coat, ties, ties the <laughs> sleeves all together as tight as he possibly could, till he had something that looked a little bit like a ball, you know. He said, throw that to me, he said, because that's the most important thing, is where I'm going to stand. So my first pass really was, I'm afraid it wasn't a Gilbert ball, but it might have been a Gilbert jacket, I don't know. But I threw Dye's coat to him. Um, and little did I fully appreciate how important it was because he gave me the confidence to at least know where he was going to be standing. Going to concentrate on the ball, I don't think people realise how different balls were. I mean, it was a, a leather ball even this one that we've got here is actually a bit of a grainier leather than I remember. They seem to be even shinier. We had proper leather balls. They were slippery when they yeah. were yeah. at all damp, weren't they? The, the, you're absolutely right. I used to live it uh, in August when, we, when the season used to start, August, September, when the pitch was nice and dry. That lovely smell of leather actually made you want to feel like playing. Of course, I'm sure I smelt the ball more than I was passing it. At, in the <laughs> days. I just love, love that uh, smell. Fortunately, at Cardiff, uh, we used to have a brand new ball, brand new Gilbert ball every for every match. No, it, it, there was something special about it. A, you were able to pass it, kick it in the right direction. It's a lovely ball to pass. It, it, it was a, a beautifully weighted ball. And this modern Gilbert ball, I mean, we never had um, a surface that was actually full of uh, special Zip. covering and dimples uh, yeah. so that it made better handling. But you, it was always a leather ball. You, you didn't play with a ball like this at all. I think I played with something similar to it in my, in my latter years. And I guess that's one of the, the real sort of changes now is at international level, pretty well yeah. throughout the world. Everybody's using Uniform. the Gilbert ball. We were very lucky in that we played in a terrific Welsh era. What are your sort of fondest memories? You had 11 years of it. I mean, I thought I'd done well, but... Uh... Yeah, I've, I've looked back on some of this, John. It's, it's hard. I enjoyed the early 70s, where we were all a little naive. We and coaching was com coming into its own with Clive, the personality of Clive Rowlands, helping the team, giving us confidence all the time. You remember what he was like. He would say the most ridiculous thing and all of a sudden everybody would look at him and, 
and then he realized he'd said the most complex thing, <laughs> and then he changed it all over and what have you. And the way in which we used to go and play that game, very, very much with um, with with no pressure, lots of confidence, because Clive would give us that, yeah, go on, well done, boys, great, great. And um, right, try this, no, try that. And we'd try it and we'd make a mess up of it. Oh, good, good move, good move. Clive would never say that it was bad. <laughs> and And so, well, I enjoyed that era as much as anything. But when you look back on it, it's hard to sort of put your finger on one reason or one spot which changed it all. There would be a number of little bits and pieces, John. But what I can remember possibly more than anything when I look back was how much we enjoyed it, mm -hmm. how much we loved it. There was, yes, we, we lost the occasional game and we were pretty miserable about that. We didn't, we didn't jump for joy when, when, when we lost. We did enjoy um, the success we had, but as much as anything, I think I enjoyed the pleasure that a lot of people had out of the way in which we played the game at that time. And even, even playing for the, for the British and Irish Lions, playing for the Barbarians. And it's nice now, every now and again, to have an Irishman, an Englishman, or a Scotsman stop you in the street and say, we love the way you played the game, you know? Yeah. No, not, not put yeah, the lead. No, but... The but, way you played the game. Thank you. That'll do for me, won't it? And this is also the 50th anniversary of the great Barbarians New Zealand game and the try that's still, for many people, the greatest try ever. Now, I've heard you talk about it before. What was really going on in your head when Phil Bennett decided not to kick for touch and to run out of his own 22? Well, I can tell you categorically one thing was not on my mind, and that was diving over the line to score a try. I was, I was going, oh, for God's sake, I, I was running this way, then I was running that way, then I was running this way. And then all of a sudden I saw the ball go deep. Oh, thank God for that, I said to myself. <laughs> I know what Phil will do. He, like a good, he, he was a good footballer, good soccer player. The next thing I'm going, what the hell is he doing now? All I can see is this guy going, this way, that way, that way. We were sitting at the same time, you know, I'm going, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to have to chase after these guys now because <laughs> as a scrum half, I was conscious that you have, you've got to be there. And my instinct was taking over and I thought to myself, hey, might be something on here. <laughs> I looked to Derek in Welsh. I said, Tule, my dare, throw it here, dare. And he slipped that ball to me perfectly. And it, was it sort of that late in the move that you realised that suddenly this might be a try-scoring opportunity? Yes, I certainly wasn't thinking about it when I was <laughs> running that way toward Phil. And I certainly wasn't thinking about it when I turned round and cursed everybody because they'd all gone past me. I thought, oh, my word, I, I'm going to have to chase <laughs> No them. breather, I've got no, to run. No breather, I've got to run. I suppose, I suppose that moment, there is a moment where just before I took the ball, the moment after I took the ball, where I'll never forget it. I'll never forget being in the stride of knowing that, I, that I'd taken the ball at the right time. And absolutely at full pace. At full pace, and off we went. And it's funny how little things come back to sort of... My mentor, Bill Samuel, who'd been my PE master and what have you, always used to tell me, dive in the corner, he says. That makes a tackler duty even twice as hard, he said, to stop you. So as I was running down the touchline, I th I'd thought, I'd, uh, and I'd asked for divine intervention, <laughs> I'll let, let my hamstrings go now. And then I, would, I thought, right, that's what I'm going to have to do, because from the corner of my eye, I could see the defence coming over. And it was a question of, will I get there first? Please, and then dived in. The, the wonderful moments. Oh, memories to cherish. Uh, memories to cherish. A few regrets, but memories to carry. Not many. <laughs> exactly. <laughs>